Yo, what's going on guys? It's time for another reaction video. And this one is coming from the YouTube channel, Ian and Anna. So if you guys like this video, make sure to go check out Ian and Anna's YouTube channel and give them a follow or subscribe. Uh, this is gonna be one in the Philippines and it's Cebu Travel Guide, top six things to do in Cebu. Let's get into it. Woot woot! Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to share with you the top things to do in Cebu. Cebu is full of adventure and it's one of the best places in the world to go canyoneering. We have spent over a month in Cebu and we can't get enough of this place. Hey guys, we're Ian and Anna from the other side. Americans that have been creating travel videos on YouTube for two years. And our mission is to make travel your priority by giving you tips and tricks on how to make travel easier and more affordable. Before Man, these guys, this, the, just the intro to this video is already making me want to travel. I want to go somewhere. I've wanted to travel for a little while now. I've been, been itching to get out of here. Uh, and this is really just, you know, solidifying that I need to get out and travel soon. Before we get started with the top things to do in Cebu, let's first talk about how to get around Cebu. It's highly likely that the majority of you will be flying into Cebu City. Whether you're traveling internationally or domestically, Cebu City is where the main airport is located. Real quick, the Philippines is notorious for having one of the worst Wi-Fi connections in the world. So if you are planning to spend a day or two in Cebu City, we have a hot tip. Go to Coffee Bay in IT Park. That has the best Wi-Fi in all of Cebu. So if you have to work or reach home, do that or get data. When you are ready to go to mobile, head to the South Bus Terminal in Cebu City. To get to the South Bus Terminal, it is best and most convenient to use Grab, which is basically Asian Uber in the Philippines and around Southeast Asia. Once you arrive to the bus station, it's kind of chaotic. There's going to be a bunch of people yelling at you. Just tell them that you want to go to mobile and make sure to ask for a bus with air conditioning. Because when we went there two years ago, we didn't know about the AC buses and we had to do a three hour ride with no AC in the Philippine summer. And it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. I could only imagine when I was in the Philippines, uh, my trip started in, in Manila for the first few days. Um, and then from Manila, we flew to, we went to Boracay Island, but we flew into some other smaller island. I don't remember which one it was, but it was near Boracay and then we rode after we exited that plane, we rode in a um, big commercial style, metro style bus um, for about an hour around that island until we got to like a ferry. And then we ferried across from whatever island that was to Boracay Island. And then we got in this sketchy looking van. Um, and then they drove us down this windy path road that was like, uh, it just didn't look inviting. I was like, what, where are we going? What are we doing? Are, are we doing the wrong thing? And then next thing I know, we pull up to our hotel and it was like amazing and everything was beautiful. But um, yes, I, like I couldn't imagine that hour long bus ride that we did with no AC. Like I live in Houston, Texas. Houston is notoriously known for being very humid here, especially in the warmer months. Summer is like you can add a couple degrees of heat just because of the humidity. And, I, and when I went to the Philippines, I learned that the humidity in the Philippines is like a million times worse than it is here in Houston. So long story short, if she's telling you they have AC buses available, definitely take the AC buses because it is very humid in the Philippines, at least what I experienced. That was the worst. So just make sure you say mobile AC and there will be plenty of people helping you to get to that bus and you will pay your fee while you're on the bus there's someone coming around to collect your payment. Then all you have to do is sit tight, relax for a three hour ride to mobile. Finally, let's get into the top six things to do in Cebu, starting with number six. Shaka Cafe. We just mentioned Shaka Cafe in our Sharagao travel guide. If you missed it, you can click right above here to watch it. When we had to leave Sharagao, we were so disappointed to be leaving Shaka too. But then something magical happened. There was the same cafe in Mobile. Shaka has incredible smoothies and it is the perfect place to kickstart your day. Another one of our favorite restaurants is Altro Trattoria, an authentic Italian restaurant that has amazing pizzas, lasagna, and salad. Both Shaka and Ultra stole our hearts, so make sure you treat yourself to these places while you're in mobile. Next up is number five, White 
beach. This one is perfect for any of you looking for a beach day in Mobile. You can even match this one with number six and do a dinner after drinking a little Tandawai and Red Horse at the beach. The easiest and cheapest way to get there is by using your own motorbike, but another way is by hiring a local tricycle that costs about $3 USD. There is an entrance fee to White Beach, but only 10 pesos per person, and the parking fee is only for cars, not for motorbikes. The water at White Beach is pristine blue, and the sand is some of the softest. So beautiful, man. I want to go back to the Philippines so bad sand we have found in the Philippines. Be ready for a lot of vendors trying to sell you coconuts, bracelets, and all sorts of stuff. We made great friends with some guys selling some beer and salad popsicles. Yep, I said it, salad popsicles. Now it's time for number- I remember having um, like nacho cheese popsicles and you would like initially, you're like, what? But then you eat it and it was good. It was really good. For four, Osmania Peak. The reason Osmania Peak is not higher on our list is because Ian and I unfortunately never made it there. One night we tried to go. We embarked on this journey at 3.30 a.m. because you try to go for sunrise and it's about an hour and a half drive from mobile. We got lost and ran out of gas. But if there's one thing we learned from that journey was to just go ahead and hire a tricycle if you're interested in doing this activity. But the downside to- I Couldn't tell you how many of the tricycles we rode during the time that it was there. Um, those and jeepneys, uh, well, let me take that back. I don't know that we did a jeepney. When we were in Manila, we had, we basically had personal drivers there. Um, we were there for my friend's wedding and her father was, um, a government official of some sort. And so we had like personal drivers. So that was kind of cool, but we definitely saw the jeepneys everywhere, but when we were on the smaller island and we were on Boracay, we definitely did a lot of those trikes. Hiring a tricycle is that it's going to be a bit more pricey. It can cost you anywhere between 1,500 and 2,500 pesos, just depending on how well you bargain with your tricycle driver. Osmeña Peak is the highest mountain in Cebu, and when you reach the top, you get a 360 degree view of the entire island of Cebu. While you're up there, you'll also see amazing peaks, little hills that resemble oh, the chocolate cool. hills that you'll find in Bohol. So if you get the chance, please see it for us because we tried to go and it never worked out. And that brings us to number three, Inamabakan Falls. We believe this to be the most underrated waterfall in all of Cebu. Unlike Kawasan Falls, which is one of the most touristy spots in all the Philippines, you will rarely see more than four tourists at Inamabakan Falls. To get here, you will have to take an hour and 15 minute motorbike ride from Mobile, but the journey is so picturesque because you drive along the coastline the entire time, looking at the blue water and passing by many small towns where you'll see kids walking to school. When you arrive at Inamabakan Falls, you will have to pay a 50 peso entrance fee per person. At the Entrance, there will be a ton of guides waiting for you. Look at all the doggies. I'm, I'm happy. You're happy? Yeah, because of you. They are free, but this makes me want to know now where is Cebu uh, in correlation to Boracay? And let's see directions. Let's say from Cebu. Okay, so yeah, I was here and it was down there. Where's Manila? Manila's up here. All right, so we flew from here to... We must have flown into one of these islands over here somewhere. Actually, I think that is where we flew into. We flew into here and then we ferried across here. But Cebu is a little bit more south. Wait, a ways more south, actually. It's like 15 hours. All right. Let's go back. Make sure to tip them because wow, do they take care of you and make sure you have the best time of your life. If you end up getting a guide named John Eric, make sure to tell him Anna and Ian say hello from the other side. Inambakan Falls is a multi-tiered waterfall with four different levels and the biggest is right at the bottom when you arrive. Not a lot of people come here and I'm still in awe because look at this. Like you gotta be, like look at this. This 100 foot waterfall will blow your mind with how powerful and blue the water is. There's just something about Cebu waterfalls having this Gatorade blue water 
and Inambakan is no exception. This was by far the most beautiful waterfall we have ever seen in Southeast Asia. Did you really think that was it though? Well, get ready for a full day of adventures. During the next couple of hours, your guide will have you hike up 20 minutes to the first falls. After your hike up at level four, you will have the chance to cliff jump at different heights with the tallest being six meters or 19 feet. At this waterfall, make sure to ask your guide to take you through the underwater cave. A huge wow. tip for this adventure is to bring some goggles and bug spray. After level four, you'll be hiking to level three where you will have an opportunity to cliff jump again. Level three's cascade is surrounded by palm trees and this is where we chilled for a while jumping and swimming. Next onto level two and that waterfall is quite powerful. It's kind of like the baby brother of the first falls you saw and here you can swim and even try and climb up the falls with a rope. After you're done here, you will hike down to level Ian and Anna, y'all are pretty adventurous with these jumps, man. I like, I'm hope, I, I'm guessing it's very open, but it looks like some of the spots y'all are leaping from, if you do it just a little bit too far to the left or the right, and you're hitting rock. Y'all a little more adventurous than me. <laughs> one where your journey began. We really think you should make it a priority to go here before it gets more popular. I mean, it's like your own private Kawasan Falls. If you're getting any value out of this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up, comment down below what you thought, and make sure to subscribe and press that notification bell because you won't miss a video from there. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this is actually a great video that they've put together. So you guys definitely go check out their channel and, and subscribe. Also, if you want more of us, don't forget to follow us on TikTok and Instagram. On Instagram, we've been giving away free presets every week. You can click right here for our free preset or our preset package that's available for purchase. Okay, now back to the video. Time for number two, Mobile Sardines and Turtles. The Sardine Run is located right off of the shore in Mobile Cebu. You can access this area by swimming from Panagsama Beach. The fish are just 30 meters off the coast. If you have your own snorkel set, you can just go on on your own from the beach for free. However, if you need to rent a set, you can do so at any dive shop along the coast. To rent a snorkel and fins, it will run you 200 pesos. We went to Ocean Blue Dive Shop and were able to simply rent a locker for our camera gear and then swim to the sardines from the shop. We found this to be the best and most affordable way to access the sardines. If you are not a confident swimmer though, you might want to schedule a tour guide or at least wear a life jacket. The sardines are one of the most magical encounters we've ever had. Being surrounded by millions of fish like that is an experience like no other. It's seriously insane how cool it is. Every time we've swum here, we've also seen so many turtles. The best time to see turtles is during high tide. High tide varies each day, but it typically is around 2 to 3.30 in the afternoon. To check, simply Google high tide and mobile and it will tell you exactly when it is. Turtles are so precious, but just make sure not to touch them. I did once back in 2018 and it was a huge mistake. I hadn't really traveled before and I was I wasn't using common sense at the time. Everyone just started crowding it. I felt so sorry for the poor thing. On top of that, so many people were standing on the coral and touching the coral to see the turtle. Even like a guide. Don't touch the coral! It's so important to preserve nature, especially turtles, considering they're endangered. Finally, we have the number one thing to do in Cebu. Canyoneering at Kawasan Falls. Even though it is the most touristy spot in Cebu, we truly believe this canyoneering experience deserves to be at number one. Just to clarify things with you guys, you can head straight to the main waterfall at Kawasan Falls and just hang out there and swim for just 45 peso entrance fee. But if you want the full experience, you will need to hire a guide for around 1,500 pesos per person or $30 USD to embark on a five hour canyoneering journey. This canyoneering tour starts in a city called Allegria, and here you will jump, swim, slide, and hike your way for three and a half hours through Gatorade Blue Water, all the way down to the main Kawasan Falls. Throughout this epic, adrenaline-filled adventure, you will be jumping from different heights of 15 to 50 feet, and also have to swim and slide down massive boulders. Don't worry though, the guides will make sure each spot is deep enough to jump, and will even jump first to show you that it's safe. You really don't go more than 10 minutes without jumping off cliffs or sliding down falls we suggest wearing man this looks so fun dude like i'm just like having flashbacks to some of the things that i got to do and while we had an amazing time we time we didn't do this kind of stuff we did island hopping and we spent a lot of time in the water but we didn't we didn't have we weren't in this kind of area we were pretty much in beachy area the entire time no no uh waterfalls no mountainous uh things like this no no jumping off of cliffs 
shoes with a nice grip because it can be quite slippery, especially if it rains the day before. If you're trying to film this experience, make sure to use your GoPro because some of these jumps may crack screens on your phones and other camera equipment. And finally, make sure to bring a great attitude. Your tour group will most likely be with other tourists and it's actually really fun to cheer others on as they make these massive jumps into the blue mystical water. Finally, after all that jumping, you will be ready for a Filipino lunch with your group at the bottom and also have time to swim at the main Kawasan Falls. We honestly think this experience Experience is one of the best things we have ever done in our entire lives. Please, please make sure this is on your bucket list for your upcoming trip to Cebu. You won't regret it. All right, guys, that's all we have for you today. We really hope that this video helps you plan your next trip to Cebu. Make sure to check out our website where we have more travel guides and travel tips along with our presets for Instagram. Click up on the card right here to check those out. Don't forget to subscribe and just show us some love, guys. That's all we have and we're out. See you in the next one. Woot, woot, yip, yip. Awesome video, man. Um, if anybody has been to Cebu recently in the last like year or so, um, or if there's anybody in the Philippines that happens to be watching this, is most of what they uh, went over like in this uh, video still um, pretty accurate? Because I think this video is a couple years old at this point. Um, so I'm curious to know if everything's still pretty accurate and, uh, if you're from the Philippines and you happen to be like one of these tour guides or something like that, is this kind of like a standard, uh, all year round? What's the best time of year to visit? Um, yeah, anything I can learn in the comments is very helpful. If you guys have suggestions of other videos from the Philippines or about the Philippines that I should watch or react to, please comment below and let me know whether it's food, music, culture, uh, tourism, history. Uh, what have you. Uh, I want to check it out and do a reaction. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe, click the bell so you'll get notified every time I upload a new video and stick around to the end of the video. I have a playlist full of other reaction videos uh, that you can check out or you can just go to my YouTube channel and check out some of my videos in general. Uh, you can dig through and see what, what kind of videos you like best. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.